that. Go make the black kids angry. Yeah. Some of the fellas down in Mobile, Alabama, are unhappy about the way that people perceive black men in Mobile, Alabama. So they want to change that. They want to make a positive change on everybody's perception of black people in Mobile, Alabama. So they all met downtown. They put on some nice suits and they said, listen, we're proud black men. This is how we want you to perceive us. We want to change your perception. It's not that all black people are criminals. So let's take a look at the perception. Then let, then why don't we visit some reality? It's okay to dress nice. It's okay to look like a man. It's okay to be a proud black man in America. There's nothing wrong with it. You know the adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. I was always taught growing up uh, that first impression is the last impression. So therefore, when you look good, you feel good, you play good. Those are the words of Deion Sanders, but also the words of flash mob organizer BK Stanton as he tries to get the attention of many, starting with having what some may consider a hard conversation. I just actually put it out there to uh, start the dialogue on Facebook, uh, just asking what was the narrative of black man in Mobile, Alabama. and. A few people were, it was, it was, it was kind of taboo. It didn't want to be talked about. It's actually about positive black men in our own city, in our own community that are here. It needs to be shown that, hey, we're more than that. We're humans also. And not everyone uh, is a criminal. Every black man you should not fear. Uh, we, we're husbands, we're fathers, we're teachers, coaches, uh, ministers, pastors, uh, different capacities that we hold. And uh, I think that just needs to be put back out there. With that same conversation, Stanton says his next step was putting together this flash mob to show off and highlight the positive black male professionals in the city. There's more to life uh, to us as well as to show an example to our youth, uh, for them to be able to see that, hey, there's more to it than just, you know, guns and violence. So it's, it's, it's really a method to curtail the violence and give a positive outlook. Flash mob participant Clayton Young Jr. agrees. It's just important for us to be lead by example. Uh, uh, we, we look at so many of the images that are being displayed as African Americans and they're, they're not in a positive light. So I thought it was important that we come down and basically uh, do away with those images by showing positive images. <laughs> the foundation is getting set by this group of men, a movement Mobile Police Chief Lawrence Batiste said he's happy to be a part of. As it relates to our youth, I hope that they look at these men that are here and say, you know, I want to be like that person that I'm seeing. And to realize that, you know, uh, appearances mean a lot. And so dressing professional, dressing for success is really important. And I think that's what you're going to see with this group of young men. Uh, you're also going to see with this group of men that, uh, that they have a desire to make a difference in our community. And so anytime I'm a part of something that's making a positive difference in our community or get a chance to be a part of it, you'll always see me there. Okay, I'll let you guys make your own judgments about their, 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 their sartorial selections and how appropriate they are to project success, how appropriate they would be in a business environment. In the meantime, this you know, cr crime in Mobile, Alabama isn't a, cri isn't a problem of perception. It's a problem of reality. Life and death reality happens every day. Bad, bad business. Uh, top 2% of the most dangerous places in America. Mobile, Alabama. This is the kind of stuff we see in Mobile every day. Tonight, Mobile police making an arrest in the murder of an elderly man, 28-year-old Timothy Hall Jr., now behind bars, facing capital murder charges. Police say Hall shot 70-year-old Larry Willingham last August during a home invasion on Pleasant Valley Road. This all happening in broad daylight. The on the day of the homicide, officers tell us Willingham's wife called police after she found his body when she came home from work. New tonight, a second arrest in a brutal attack of an 81-year-old woman. This all happened Tuesday on Panetta Court near Dolphin Island Parkway. 24-year-old Terrence Nelson facing first-degree robbery charges now in connection to that crime. He's set to be in court Wednesday, the same day as the first person arrested in this case. Get out of my face. I don't do stuff like that. No, I didn't. 
28-year-old Francilia Chassain facing multiple charges, including elder abuse, robbery, and assault. And so now when we get past a discussion of everybody's fashion choices, we're left with these questions about crime, uh, perception and reality in Mobile, Alabama. Is it just a perception thing? Or is crime in Mobile, Alabama a black thing? Please, sir. I want some more. What? Please, sir. I want some more. Or is the fact that crime, it, lots and lots of black people are arrested, put in jail, go to prison in Mobile, Alabama, is that a black thing or is that a white racism thing? And if it's a white racism thing, is putting, is changing somebody's, get, getting somebody an upgrade in their clothing, is that going to make a difference? See, these aren't trivial questions. These are the questions everybody answers every day in cities all over America. And increasingly, more and more often, we're getting the answer to the question, which is black crime is a white racism thing. So, you know, why are we, why are we putting black people in prison if the only reason they're there is because of the white racism that forced them to commit this crime and violence and jaywalking? Because we're always putting black people in prison for no reason or little reason whatsoever, like jaywalking. That's what I learned from watching television. That's what I learned to listening to people talk about criminal justice reform. Don't mention that to a cop. They get kind of irritated when people talk about things like that around them because they don't really, they don't really like to tolerate stupid people who don't know what they're talking about, even if that does make the black kids angry.